realize experiential learning is the best learning can get. It allows you to go out and learn by doing, to get a better understanding for what you're supposed to learn. Flying kites, does that sound like school? To you, probably not. But to me, it is the Mount Everest of learning. Learning that involves listening skills, self-control, understanding, willingness, and physics. Hands-on physics, to be exact. These kites, these learning tools, if you will, are a fine example of physics. The sight evaluation for the kite alone is physics. The wind shadows, wind windows, wind direction, speed, velocity, and gravity. These are all physics. When we did our sight evaluation, we learned all about these things. Flying a kite that is larger than your own wingspan is exhilarating and just all around incredible. You can feel the force of the wind in your hands, tugging at the kite, urging it to lift you from the ground, urging you to fly. In some cases, the wind almost did cause flight to take a kid on a journey. The wind pushes your back and stings your face, but you don't care. You don't care because the feeling of bliss has flown in on a high-flying kite that you are piloting. The wind that whips through your hair sometimes subsides in midair. The kite stops, folds in on itself, and falls. You have to think fast, but you have to be in control. You pull on the steering bar, and the force of the kite tearing back into the sky almost pulls you off your feet. I myself love kiting, and if I was given this chance again, I would take it. And if I'm the only one who liked it, then I will be supremely shocked. I would like to thank the Stephen and Tabitha King Foundation for this amazing opportunity and Chris Krug from Hardwater Kiting for teaching us about something so enlightening and so empowering that it's hard to explain with words. Thank you. We wanted to learn and we learn by doing and that is exactly what we did. Keezer Falls Gorge is a beautiful place, tucked into a secluded area in Level Maine. A place we went to learn, but I took away something different. I took away and was taken away by the beauty of the falls. Rain was falling lightly, and the falls were amazingly beautiful. The eddies swirled around, slowly making their mark on the granite beneath. The river ran along, rushing over stones, then falling down a wall of rock. The water cascaded down the rock face, carving the rock, slowly making its own mark. A mark that will be there for millions of years for the rest of our lifetime, and that mark will forever leave a mark on me, a mark in my mind of what true peace is like, a mark that will last and will not be forgotten, and that mark represents Mesa. I would like to thank the Greater Level Land Trust for making it possible for us to learn in such a beautiful place. Ice fishing is a great experience when you do it the right way. Sitting on the ice with no ice shack, that's the life. The boredom and peace as you sit basking in the sun, waiting for a flag. The rush of adrenaline as everyone races to a flag. And the anticipation as you pull up your line, only to find that the fish is much smarter than you and has let go of the bait. That was ice fishing with Mesa this year. You went back to chatting with your friends, sharing snacks, and sitting on the ice. The day that Mesa went ice fishing was fairly warm. Combine that with the rising temperatures of spring, and you get slush. Lots and lots of slush. There's about a foot of slush sitting on top of ice crusted with snow. By lunch, the snow had left and there were channels of slush connecting little islands of packed down snow where we sat waiting. We waited and waited. As time drew on, hours merged together. Finally, having little luck in catching fish, we did the flop. The flop is an annual fish call in which one person yells, everybody do the flop. Then we all flop on the ground and act like fish out of water. Within five minutes of doing the flop, the first fish was caught by Abby and Audra. Then Will and Bowen followed suit. The fish once again eluded us. The slush got slushier and feet and hands got wet. I loved ice fishing and it would have been better without the slush, but hey, can't stop nature. I think that people loved it, but we're unprepared for the slush, myself included. Many families and friends showed up and talked. Even Hannah came over. Overall, ice fishing was pretty great. It was fun. Let me begin this with a story. In the winter of 2014, we wanted to learn, but not in the way that is considered normal. 
We wanted to learn by doing. So we scheduled a time to go and learn by making sleds out of cardboard and racing them. This probably doesn't sound like learning, but there's a lot of physics that go on behind the scenes. Physics like velocity, speed, momentum, and friction. The race was canceled due to temperature, and every time it was rescheduled, it was either too cold, not the right snow, or it was a snow day. Flash forward to the winter of 2015. We were on the bus to go on a hike up Mount Douglas, or so we thought. The bus slowed near a park as Mr. Oliver yelled, Hey! We all stopped talking. Everybody thought we were in trouble. Today is an important day, he said. You will remember every day, but today is an important day because we're going cardboard sled racing. Screams of laughter and shouts of joy drowned out the bus engine as everybody from last year rejoiced. It was finally going to happen. We were finally going cardboard sled racing. In the park, we constructed our sleds, then raced them. Through the averages of each time of each team, places came forth. Mrs. Berry's team came in first with an average time of 5.74. Mrs. Louie's team in second with a time of 5.84. And Mr. Oliver's team came in with an average of 11.43. Although we lost, we learned a ton about friction, velocity, momentum, and speed. I loved cardboard sled racing. Everybody did, and everybody probably would do it again if they were given the chance. We came to learn, and that we did.